How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse and in today's video we are checking out the latest that Mesh Mixer has to offer. I am using the latest beta of Mesh Mixer, I like to live on the edge and during the process of testing out this new software we're going to see if we can fix some really, really horrible 3D printing files. Let's get into it. Alright, I've just updated to the latest beta of Mesh Mixer and this is the, the end user license agreement that pops up now with Mesh Mixer. It's worth having a quick squiz through. Basically, Mesh Mixer is made up of a lot of other little bits of software. And um, it's got the, the agreements for all of that in it, as well as the uh, pretty much protection of themselves saying that there's no warranty or guarantees using this software. So don't use it to design anything that's like life, life sustaining and then something might fail. You can't go back and sue mesh mixer for that anyway it's all pretty standard stuff i didn't find anything too nasty in here so definitely let me know in the comments if there is anything to be worried about but other than that it's all good let's accept and go straight into mesh mixer this is new for me at new analytics see how we use it um that some people might want that turned off i'm okay with that to be honest cool so the latest mesh mixer has several serious improvements over all the versions I used to show in my tutorials and one of the main major improvements is updating the make solid tool so let's do an example let's grab a file here import this one this is a Miku Hatsun figure posed and ripped out of a another format I've forgotten the exact extension I'm doing a video on this very soon this is a horrible file. This is completely unprintable in its current state. And if you work on 3D hubs, if you work in 3D printing on demand, you get files like this from people who design in Rhino, SketchUp, Maya, different programs which aren't really designed for 3D printing, you'll get files like this. And normally you'd just be like, nah, that can't, can't work. But you can actually fix them. It does, there is sort of two ways you can do like a quick and dirty way and a long and tedious way. In my video coming up for this, um, Miku fixing, I'm going to do a long and tedious way. But for now, I'm going to show you how you can use the Make Solid tool to quickly fix really terrible STL files. Actually, before I do that, let's look at the scale. So let's go to analysis and units and dimensions. It's kind of a weird angle there. So yeah, it's pretty tiny. That's change the scale so we know what we're working with. Let's make her 150 high. That's something more realistic. So let's go to edit and make solid. So it's red and it's not actually red because the triangles are inverted. It's red because of several errors. And yeah, normally printing this, the printer would just freak out, but we can go to, go to the make solid tool, ramp our accuracy and mesh density up again, much higher file size after we do this. And let's change the offset distance of the mesh to offset and add some thickness. Let's make it 0.2. Just something, something small to start with. And then you hit update and just let it chug along and let it update the file. And we get something like that, which is actually not too bad for a first pass. Right, so that offset of 0.2 kind of looks all right. The skirt's a little bit awful. So we might add a bit more accuracy, a bit more mesh density and make it offset to 0.5. Here that goes. And that's more like it. Check that out. So that's offset to 0.5. So you will get some areas looking thicker than they should be, like the hands are sort of a little bit, a bit like sausages. But to be honest, at the scale you're printing this, especially in FDM, you wouldn't really be able to print those details anyway. So yeah. It looks pretty good. The skirt looks decent. Now, this is not guaranteeing that it's printable. You still need to take into consideration overhangs, thin features, all of that. But if we accept that, you can see that this is the original. You know, completely ruined. Let's press W to see the triangles. Just absolutely awful. Zero thickness, everything. And then the fixed one. Tons more triangles. Heaps more triangles but much more printable and it does round off edges and that kind of thing so what we can do is we've got one of them let's go back in and try the other option in the make solid tool which is sharp edge preserve this is a new feature they've added in in the latest 
uh, latest mesh mixers, which should do a little bit of a better job at making those sharper edges, those transitions stay sharp. But um, apparently it uses tons of processing power. So we'll see what happens here. Uh, you can't even offset. Okay. Let's see how that goes. So I'm thinking this sharp edge preserve might be really handy for architectural prints. Like, you know, all those architectural students that come to the 3D printing studios and can't get their files done because they've got horrible errors. I think this might help you make those files printable. Definitely charge for your time if you're doing that though. This is, your time isn't free and this takes a lot of time. Right, so that was Sharp Edge Preserve. It, um, yeah, for this model, not really suitable, I don't think. It's tried really hard to do it properly and it has preserved sharp edges, but it hasn't been able to offset things which this model really needed. So, in this case, we're not gonna do that. We'll just stick with our Made Solid and Thickened. Cool, so say you've got this, uh, I'm just gonna go on a tangent here. Got all those triangles, loads of triangles. Pressing uh, W, by the way, to show the wireframe. So we can just do select, control A, and then I am using Windows, control A, and then we can reduce, reduce, and reduce is gonna let us reduce those triangles down to something more manageable by a 3D printer. You're gonna lose detail by doing this, but how much detail can your FDM printer re reproduce anyway? The idea of reducing is it will decimate down those triangles. But the cool thing about Mesh Mixer is there's various different filters we can use. We don't have to do an unintelligent, like, halving of triangle count. We can actually do a max deviation. So it will only reduce triangles where it needs to without losing too much detail. And we can actually set a really high detail and still cut down probably half the file size. So let's give this a shot. So obviously... 0.16 deviation makes it into a low poly model, which kind of looks pretty funky, but that's not what I want at all. So we can literally just enter 0.001, like tiny amount of deviation, but that is enough to probably remove at least half the file size, I would say, out of this model. That's the thing about Make Solid. It's, it's a really powerful filter, but it is very, very expensive in terms of your, your triangle count. So here we go. Here's the new model. And it looks pretty decent. You can see some areas like yeah, the, the sleeves, it's left a lot of triangles, but some areas like the skirt, it hasn't needed. So it's done that. And that's good to go. We can export that out. File export. Miku. Thickened. STL is fine. Good. One or more object has been exported is complex. Mesh may have errors. Ooh, still may have errors. Let's continue anyway. And let's have a quick look in Inspector. Yeah, there's a couple of small errors. Sometimes when you make solid and then reduce, you can get some holes. So let's auto repair that. Didn't change anything. Then let's see if that fixes that, that, um, that pop up. Yes. Done. Okay, that's all it was. So we can fire something like Simplify 3D. And we can dump it into Simplify 3D and see how it would print. Exciting. And my computer's like, oh god, Simplify 3D and Mesh Mixer and OBS. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, face first. All right. I can just um, put a foot on the ground. Edits. Place service on bed. There we go. Center and arrange. This model would need tons of support. Obviously, I would go back in and slice certain areas off and glue in glue them together later that's usually the better way to do it but we can just experiment and have a look see how, how it would go <laughs> so that would be as much support as you'd need to print this model but it is possible I have seen models like this print before and it does work uh, oh I've got infill turned off let's turn infill on 10% 20% I'll do better print so it would be this is a pretty rough, nasty print. But yeah, look, see? It will print up fine. You know, the skirt's a little bit iffy. But not too bad. So yeah, that's how you can fix awful files quite easily using the Mesh Mixer Make Solid tool. So let's move on to one of the other awesome features in Mesh Mixer. The Boolean Operations. Alright, so this is another model I've been fixing up for a friend and... It looked okay, I passed it through the NetFab Cloud Engine and I thought it was fixed, but if you go to separate shells, 
It ain't fixed. There is an awful amount of things that aren't joined together. And you're like, yo, why aren't they joined together? It doesn't make any sense. Well, this is why. They're not actually touching. And this is a classic case of a well-intentioned designer using uh, a 3D modeling program like Maya. Oh, I've lost it completely. There you go. To design, but actually they're not ready for printing. They're hovering, they're not touching. And we could go through a tedious process of making them closer and then exporting, whatever. We don't need to do that. We can fix this within Mesh Mixer now using the new Boolean Union functions because the older ones used to cause too much artifacting, wasn't very good. The newest one is much more powerful. Let's go through that. So I'm gonna select these dots and we can combine them so we don't have to do that ever again. Right, bring back the map. And we will now move those dots within uh, a contact of the main body, so transform. And just visually, so you can see them start to move in, that'll do. Accept. And this is where the magic comes in. So select both, that, that, holding shift, selects both of them in the uh, object browser. Then we want to go to Boolean Union under the Edit menu. Oh, it defaults to Precise, excellent. So, yeah, fast approximate, probably not going to do what we want. Let's have a quick look. <laughs> yeah, so you see there's artifacts. It's deforming, it's not very accurate. We don't want that. What we want is Precise. And there's a few advanced features now. I don't, still don't know what Annihilation means. I tweeted the guys on on uh, Mesh Mixer as to uh, what does Annihilation actually mean. <laughs> but it's, it's very CPU intensive, it's lagging up quite a bit. I'm not sure what difference in use intersection curves makes, let's have a, have a look. Uh, but what it's done is it's added lots of extra triangles to work with. Before it didn't do that, you'd have to do it manually. Yeah, it actually looks quite nice. Okay, so this is the secret source I've found so far. If I go through and accept this now, it's not going to work. And I'm not sure why, but it has something to do with the auto reducing that's occurring afterwards. So see, it's just wrecked it basically. So let's just uh, undo that and go backwards. We don't want to auto reduce in this case, because what the preview shows us is what we want. Even though there's tons more triangles than we need, that's what we have to live with. So untick the auto reduce result, and that way we will get what we see. We're gonna get this <laughs> heaps of extra triangles, but the parts will combine. So accept, and it will join them together like that. So I'll just press W again so you don't see that. These are now joined together. They are now one part, like that. It's not as clean as running it through NetFab Cloud. You can see these dots here on the left were NetFab Cloud. These dots on the right are Mesh Mixer. Mesh Mixer, still at its core, is more for organic modeling and organic fixing of STLs and meshes and scans and things like that. But you can now fix geometric things as well, which is very, very handy. Right, so now we've got those union, they are joined together, but you can see here, because we couldn't auto-simplify, there is triangles everywhere. There is all this, like, triangle vomit of from vertexes. It's awful. So we can get rid of that. It is common courtesy to make files, STL files, as light as possible when you're uploading them to Thingiverse. You don't want huge files because this is detail no one's going to see and no one's going to care about. It's a flat plane and it's just going to add to the bulk of the STL file. So uh, to do that, I'm going to go to Edit and generate face groups because I want to remove, separate through face groups the uh, the flat plane. So we'll change the angle threshold much higher. There we go. Excellent. So now I've got that face that uh, that face group there, the green one. Now we can just select just that face group, not touching our little little bumps at all, and we can just literally go through and reduce the heck out of that face group. So that's just. Yeah, shape preserving's fine. Max deviation, mm, not sure which is the best. Let's go with max deviation and see what happens. Really, you just want to get rid of, yeah, that's much better. Check that out. So that is just 
I, I'm not really a fan of this single vertex um, meshing method. But if I wanted to do it better, I could use remesh. Actually, let's just try that. Let's just wing it. Okay, so this is what I can get using reduce using max deviation. Let's try what we can get using a remesh. So edit remesh. This was my life last year, basically fixing bad files and waiting for <laughs> the software to catch up. This is why having a powerful workstation is so handy when working with large and awful mesh files and mesh editing and all that. Like I've got a, like a, a six core X mining rig workstation that works really well at my other place now. But this, this is an i7 and it's still taking a long time. So I wouldn't mind a new rig. That would be pretty nice. Well, that is totally not what we wanted at all. Um, <laughs> it's just like added triangles everywhere. <laughs> okay, so in this circumstance, using the remesh tool is not really appropriate. It would be appropriate if you wanted to add more triangles in, and you can probably reduce it down, but I'm not going to be waiting for it to, re to update every time. So in this case, it's just a flat plane with a few balls on top. We can just use the max deviation to just cut it down and I'm, that is fine I'm happy with that let's move on from there you could spend hours and hours and I will often spend hours and hours fixing files to make them perfect it's sort of addicting uh, when you get into it uh, one thing to note is we now have a few tiny errors down here you notice a little red I spotted that a mile away that is a hole we can go to inspector and we can try to fix it let's see if it works Yes, kind of ruined some things a little bit, but I don't care at this stage. <laughs> um, so when you do reduce, sometimes you will get errors. And we could go in and manually repair that, but that's a topic for another video. And one last thing I want to quickly mention and thank the Mesh Mixer team. You used to have to singly select files one by one and put them into the, the window to work on, or you have to do a bit of a workaround by dragging them from an external explorer window and into the Mesh Mixer software. Now you can select as many as you like and bring them in like that. And they're all here brought in at once. How cool is that? So thanks to the Mesh Mixer guys for actually doing that because I do use that a lot when I'm importing assemblies from stuff like SolidWorks where I need to dump them all in and then use the Make Solid tool to make them printable. And for those who are wondering just how far you can go fixing these STL files. Well, this is the Miku I've been working on and this is going to be in a video coming very soon. I've been starting to print it out. Everything has been thickened, repaired and separated out for easy assembly. We've got the hand there. We can turn the hand off. You can see it slots into the, I call them arm socks. I don't know what they're actually meant to be called <laughs> into the arm there. Even the tie is separated. The hair is separated out. And you can see here that I've designed it all essentially, there we go, slot into place. And there's one of the heads with the hair. And this video is coming very soon. I've got some very special PLA plastic to print the final one in. So don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss that video. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this video on Mesh Mixer here on Makers Muse. If you want to see future 3D printing tips, tricks, reviews, tutorials on Mesh Mixer, 3D printers, other software and that kind of thing here on Makers Muse, don't forget to subscribe. It helps me out a huge amount and I'd love to have you on board. Also, this channel is completely supported by you guys here on YouTube. It's my full-time job and if you want to consider supporting my Patreon, you can find the link there. It's completely, completely optional, but I do have some perks in there you might find interesting. Anyway, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later. Here's the latter half of the 20th century. A man has sent rockets into deep space. He has placed satellites into orbit. He has actually walked in space.